from Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiz. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate, we think, Final Fantasy podcast. I am Joe. And I'm Caleb. And uh, we had, this week, on Wednesday, we sat down via Skype with Anira Grigori of Limit Break Radio. And so we're actually going to play that interview in two parts. Part one is going to be on this episode. Part two will be on next week's episode. We didn't expect it to be a three-hour interview, but it turned into one glorious, in-depth, three-hour interview with the main man of Limit Break Radio. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, We didn't even really have to do anything. (laughs) Guy followed exactly what we were going to ask him without even knowing, and it was a good time, so... uh, yeah. yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So <laughs> you can find that episode, or this episode, I suppose, and everything else we've released on youtube.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Follow us on Twitter, at UFF Podcast. Like our page on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Uh, throw us a few bucks on Patreon if you'd like. Um, we recently got a goal for the new website. We're getting that migrated over now, and uh, it might be down for this episode, yeah. actually. We're not sure how long it's going to take it could be down i think it's going to go down on sunday or monday and uh we'll try to pick it up as soon as we can it's going to be construction zone for a little while yeah until we get everything worked out so uh there's that and follow me on twitch i've been streaming 13 um been doing some off cam grinding but most of it's been on you know online with twitch and that's twitch.tv slash ultima final fantasy and then you find this and more at uh, ultimafinalfantasy.com. Yes. Um, well, you can find it, assuming the website's yeah. not down. If you want to jump on the forums, though, the forum URL for now is ultimafinalfantasy.boards.net. Right. However, that forum is going to go the way of the dinosaurs in the next couple months, but we're still using that for now. Right, so that'll that'll be safe yeah. until the site's up. And if you want to join us on Final Fantasy XIV, we're going to be starting that soon. Apparently, we're going on Bryn Hilder. I had a little issue with my Final Fantasy XIV game uh, yesterday where I had bought a used copy, stupidly, yes. and uh, it turns out the registration code was already in use and you couldn't use it again. So I wasted 20 bucks, I don't know how many months ago, when I got the PS4 version of uh, Final Fantasy XIV. So uh, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to play it on. I think I said I was going to play it on P- uh, PC, but I think I've changed my mind since then. I think I'm going to go with PS4. Yeah? Yeah, just, just for the fact that I bought a PS4, and I kind of want a reason to play on it. Yeah, I feel you. Is that a weird want? Not really, although it is a weird want that you feel the need to have a physical copy of a downloadable game for ps4 and this is your punishment for uh for wanting that <laughs> you could have just bought the damn thing on the playstation store but i don't know i wasn't even thinking of that though when you bought it i was like oh cool i didn't even think registration code why would you buy a used copy i was like well why would they even sell it but well i'm pretty mad as, as, i'm pretty mad as fuck to the uh, people who sold it to me but i think it's too late for returns yeah it's it's probably far too late now yeah uh so where are you in ff13 right now i am grinding it out i'm still working towards that platinum trophy oh yeah and uh i've just been killing adamant tortoise and the adamant toys hunt hunt number 63 i get a gold ingot out of that every time and i just jump on the chocobo ride around pick up a few treasures on the way go take on the hunt on the way back i'll kill one of the even bigger guys to try to get one of the the trap drops which i've been having way better luck with on the advanced adamant tortoise versus the adamantois and they also give you two hundred thousand experience so i'm about to max out everyone's crystallarium too it's good stuff yeah i saw that yeah and you uh what about you i am done yeah (laughs) done hey are we gonna record uh the ff13 episode next saturday or uh the saturday after 
I'm not sure whichever one works better for you. Let's go with next Saturday. All right. Yeah. So it's going to be recorded a week earlier than it will actually be put out. All right. That's fair enough. So if you want to join us, we'll be on twitch.tv next Saturday. Yeah. Forever and ever. Yeah. It's going to be a long review episode as most of our reviews are. Are. However, if you want to ask a question or leave your short review, there are places to do that in our forum, ultimafinalfantasy.boards.net. Schweiss, let's get to the news. All right, let's do it. News, news, news. All right, so first up in news, uh, the new Final Fantasy Adventure game apparently is for PlayStation Vita. Um, According to Sony TGS 2015's website, it's got it listed as its console. I I thought that one was going to be a PS4 game. I thought it was going to be on mobile? Really? The one that looks really good? You thought that was going to be a mobile game? Uh, Yeah, I did. Mm, Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I just got it mixed up with all the other mobile games. Yeah, all the other jillion games are coming out with. Yeah, what is this mobile game you're going to speak of right now? Uh, This one is Final Fantasy Adventure 3D Remake that has also been announced for PS Vita and smartphones. I think it's the same game. Uh, I think so, yeah. I think someone just gave us two pieces of news. It is, so it's going to also be on the uh, So it is going to be on smartphones. True, but I bet you it's going to look crappier on the smartphone. The trailer they gave for... Disorganized. For it is much better. (laughs) Disorganized. Fuck you. (laughs) So, uh... We got that one already. Yeah. A lot of repeats. Oh, yeah, this one is a kind of news... So apparently we're gonna we may see more three D remakes if Final Fantasy Adventure does well. So yet another moment where Square is like, if it's like they have a scientific method to the news they release sometimes. They're like, if this, then this may hey, happen. Hey, you see this little thing? Uh buy a lot of it and then <laughs> this other thing might happen. Who knows? Yeah. This other thing that you want and will pay for might happen. Yeah. Um, I don't Fuck know. You. I don't know if we mentioned this last week or not. The uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero Online was announced for PC and smartphone. Online? What? Yeah, no, we didn't talk about this at all. Um, it's gonna have a multi. It's gonna be like the multiplayer mode in there, but apparently a better and more hack and slash style. I haven't played the multiplayer or Type Zero at all, so I'm not really sure what that means. But if you guys have played it and you enjoy it, uh, I'd be looking forward to that. Looks like it's going to be launching spring 2016 in Japan for smartphone uh, and is currently being considered. I'm sick of all these smartphone games. For Can North we America just stop doing news on the Europe. smartphone Final Fantasies? <laughs> you know, we might have to. We might just have to. <laughs> so uh, FF14 has a new patch. Well, the 14 patch 3.1 is going to launch this November and there's going to be new raids and more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, more 24-player raids, uh, similar to the Crystal Tower series, is going to be available in 3.1. And the role requirements are going to be the same as those in World of Darkness, which means, you know, one tank, two healers, and five DPS, as we all know, of course. Of, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, more we dungeons. We that's know what that means. That's kind of what, uh, what 14 and MMOs are all about, is the dungeon raids with friends. Mm. And apparently there's a RTS minigame, Lord of Verminion, and there's some details on that. I honestly have no idea what this is. <laughs> it's apparently some sort of minigame, obviously, within 14... And you get to use your own minions for battle. You can summon them multiple times. It's like a some sort of arena looking thing. Huh. I don't know. This probably means a lot that looks more interesting. To, to everyone who plays 14. Well, we'll be playing 14 in just a little bit here. It's true. Yeah. In just a little bit. In fact, uh, just keep a look on our Twitter and uh, we'll let you know when we're on for the first time at least. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll tweet when we start streaming it. So... And obviously, if I don't forget to change the game from 13 to 14, we'll be fine. And, uh, yeah, there's some more details on Kingdom Hearts 2.8, blah, 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 (laughs) PS5. 
Yet another World of Final Fantasy thing. And then the most important news. Okay, so we're finally to the important stuff. Yeah, the actual news, the the meaty goodness of Final Fantasy XV. So earlier we watched the uh, the new Chocobo trailer and the fishing minigame trailer. What did you think about that? I... <laughs> I thought the Chocobo what didn't look that much faster than just walking around in the game. However, of course, being safe from the creatures uh, is, of course, an, always a good thing when you're on a Chocobo. Really? I thought he was way yeah, faster. Yeah, he's oh, he's like faster, but option. it didn't seem like it was... It didn't seem like overworld mappy with the Chocobo that we're used to, you know? It seemed more like the FF12 kind of Chocobo where it's in the same environment... And it's 50% faster. Yeah. And with that, it doesn't seem as impressive to me. Yeah. The 13 one is really fucking slow, too. And I hate their dreadlocks. God damn it. <laughs> or not dreads. Whatever it is. Like the, the Obi-Wan braid thing. That yeah, I know what you're talking head. about. Like so dumb. So yep. there's uh, new details on Luna, Freya, Yuna, blah, blah, blah. How many ever names they want to combine into one. <laughs> And the black-haired woman. So this one, I don't know. The 15 is seeming a lot more along the veins of 12 with the, the politics of it all. And apparently King Regis uh, fought in his youth beside Sid and General Kor. Is it Kor or is it Sor? Does it hurt? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, apparently there's a new black-haired woman that we saw in the trailer. And her name is Gente- Gentiana... Gentiana, wow. and she plays an important you know how, role. You know how much that, that name looks like genitalia from this far away? <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Gentiana. Quite is the answer to that. Oh, so, uh, And this is kind of interesting off news. They released a like a perfume, a Noctis perfume. I don't Final believe Fantasy it. This 15. is from Kotaku. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh... Eau de toilette? Yeah. It's, Noctis. Apparently it smells kind of citrusy. And I guess okay. Noctis smells like uh, like lemon and lime. I don't I don't know how to take that. It's just <laughs> it is Kotaku. You're right. Maybe uh, maybe we shouldn't even talk about it. But right. I don't know. Well, thank you Shinru for giving us some news this week. Shinru and uh, Sinner something something. Sinner something something. Yeah. Way to go. Schweiz. Well, it's like 0913, but I'm, I think that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure. If they come up with fuck off names with a ton of numbers in them, I can't, <laughs> I can't be helped. It's going to be messed up. Okay. Um, so, guys, it's now time for our interview with uh, Nero. Part one. This interview, this part of the interview is about the final, like the, the Limit Break Radio of old, of yesteryear. Yeah, the FF11 days. Yeah, the FF11 days, starting in 2006 and ending, I think, in around 2009 or 10 or something around there. Yeah, something like that. I'm, we'll find out soon. Um, anyway, he actually really opened up to us, and he went really in-depth with the Final Fantasy XI days, and especially what happened in between Final Fantasy XI and and Final Fantasy uh, 14, a, a Realm Reborn. Correct. And what happened with his podcast. If you guys don't know about Limit Break Radio, I don't know. If you listen to our show, I don't know how you don't know about Limit Break Radio. Yeah. Because they famously, of course, won our own contest <laughs> yeah. with our own name submitted to our own voters who decided to vote for Limit Break Radio. Well, Actually, it was I, I probably think it was theirs, guys. yeah. It was a lot of people that uh, <laughs> voted for them. So, with the You can see the episode. It's the 2014 UFF Podcast Awards, and we had an award out for Best Final Fantasy Podcast. And we, of course, put our own name in there thinking, hey, we're this is going to be just kind of an award that'll be, haha, we're the best. Yeah, we. I, I was kind of pissed off when I found out you did. I was like, dude, well, that's douchey. Well, and then we lost anyway. We're certainly not going to do it for next year. <laughs> no. We, we will not put our own name there because we'll just assume we're number one. And then number and two then is the real. Number two yeah, is, yeah. is going to be the winner. You know, you're, you're, you're good, right? Yeah, right, right. Anyway. <laughs> We tweeted out to all these people, all these other podcasts that they were nominated, and of course, Limit Break Radio's fans being a large and rambunctious bunch. <laughs> yeah, really. Got onto us. our website and destroyed us. Yeah, it was. We it was were quick. second though. The Final Fantasy Union fan base is just not as strong. Well, they're either not as strong or they don't like us, which is fine, I guess. I don't. Give either a way, shit. fuck them. Anyway. <laughs> 
Jeez. <laughs> Hey, they got nominated. It's an honor to be nominated. It's true. Right? Yeah. We, right? Uh, it's definitely an honor. <laughs> I think we should up it this year. We should like get cheap awards and send them out. I think that would be cool. I think that'd be really cool. I think really we should cool. do that. Do like a, yeah. like a golden microphone for best host. Yeah. We limit list like everybody. Anyway, when you look in the top 200 uh, video game podcasts in iTunes, Limit Break Radio is always up there. And they've been up there since we started podcasting. And ever since they won kind of our, our award show, I, I went back and listened to a bunch of their old stuff when we were going through FF11. And I've been listening. I usually listen to their new episodes as they come out. And they're just a really tight, exciting show. Right. And we can't do the same thing that they do because they got like 60 hosts. Yeah, we can't quite do that. <laughs> they, got, they got five people on there. Um. So, so it's an entirely different show, but certainly when when they won that award, we went back and looked at their stuff and was like, okay, what are they do? What are they doing that we can do yeah. better? And I think our show has improved since then, and I can say that at least in part, it has to do with us, you know, paying attention to Limit Break Radio. And uh, I just want to thank Aniro for coming on, guys. Uh, enjoy the interview. Yeah. All right, everybody. So we're here with a Nero of Limit Break Radio, the man himself, the king of Final Fantasy podcasts. Yeah, the hey, ass I kicker. Will <laughs> gladly <laughs> accept that title. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. This is this is fun. All right, so we're gonna go through the history of Limit Break Radio, but oh God, uh, why? <laughs> because we're interested. I mean, you your podcast beat us at our own. Stupid contest, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for best Final Fantasy podcast, and and I will say that for last year, you guys deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we started in May, so it's, yeah. I mean, it's we whatever. didn't have a full year to grow yet. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. We're, we're fair working enough. our way up right now. I do have it's, to ask you though, and everybody was asking on the forum this: What was your first Final Fantasy? What was my very first Final Fantasy? That's a fantastic question. So my very uh, I'll, I'll start with this answer. My very first RPG was actually Legend of Dragoon for PlayStation 1. Nice. Oh, nice. Which, which was what opened me up to the RPG genre. And from there, I kind of became hooked and found Final Fantasy. Like, a, a, lot of my ga- a lot of my friends in middle school were really big fans of both Resident Evil and Final Fantasy VII. Uh, and I didn't have a PlayStation. I still had a Nintendo 64 at that time. And when I finally did get a PlayStation, which was a couple of years after, uh, you know, after my peers, um, I, I gravitated towards some of the stuff that was going around then, like, uh, Metal Gear Solid and Legend of Dragoon had just come out and its graphics were, it, it was Legend of Dragoon and Chrono Cross, uh, and their graphics and their, their soundtrack really kind of struck a chord with me. And that was sort of like my way in way to, into RPGs, into RPGs. Yeah. Because before that, I would say that I, I, you know, I was a huge Zelda fan, um, uh, you know, going back to, to like the NES days. And I played a lot of that on SNES, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that was, that was sort of like, like really my only point of contact. I didn't really find final fantasy until after like in the PlayStation era, uh, it wasn't it, w- it definitely wasn't a presence for me in like um, in, in like the Super Nintendo days uh, when I when I was that. Yeah, I mean, like I I had a healthy interest in all of those games and I went back and played all of them uh, as you know, as I as I got more interested in it when I became uh, more of an ad- adolescent and an adult. Uh, but, yeah, that was not something that that was in my childhood. My childhood was mostly filled with like uh, aliens games. I played. A, I loved aliens uh, as as like a series and like um uh yeah that was a big foothold a terminator too so it was like <laughs> like yeah like that that was the stuff that when i was a kid really interested me and then as i grew up i i kind of found final fantasy then so my i think my very first final fantasy game that i ever really sat down and and tried to play was 9 oh, okay. it was like either oh, eight, wow. 8 8 or 9 
And and I I wasn't totally into it because Legend of Dragoon was so much more streamlined than Final Fantasy was because Final Fantasy had some really grind heavy parts and Legend of Dragoon (laughs) didn't necessarily have those. It kind of streamlined that a little bit more. So I wasn't I wasn't as into those games uh, at first. And then uh, I I went I, I think it was it was Final Fantasy 10. Uh, that when that came out and I bought it and I played it front to back and then it, and then I got it, like the Final Fantasy uh, idea like clicked for me because the thing that the thing that kind of turned me away from it was uh, or initially and this is going to sound kind of funny and, and, and a little bit weird. But the okay. thing that kind of uh, turned me away from it initially was that the fact that the games weren't connected at all. Like I uh-huh. couldn't get. I couldn't get over the fact that one didn't go into two and like the story didn't was like completely self-contained. Like for some reason, my my kid brain couldn't. I was like, then why do I? I don't care. (laughs) You know what I mean? You don't understand how there could be a sequel. And yet it has nothing to do with the other other game in the series. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and so because of that, like I I couldn't totally get on board with it. And so um once I played 10 and, and I finished 10 and I, I, I like I something it like just clicked for me. Uh, so that it was at that point that I started going back in the catalog and like playing games to completion. And there's no Final Fantasy game that I haven't um, that I haven't played through and beaten except for two. Two is the only one that I haven't actually played. Like the real game. two or four? Yeah, the real two. The yeah. real two. Okay, the real there we two. go. Yeah. We got no, through but, it. <laughs> no, I use I use the proper numbering structure. Oh, it's thank six God. is not three. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, that uh, that that was really sort of my point of contact was was actually Legend of Dragoon, which wasn't you know that wasn't even a Square game. So I found I actually found Square games a little bit later in my life. Yeah. Nice. Hey, uh, speaking of Legend of Dragoon, did you ever get that get the button combo thing down? I did. Yeah, that nice. was actually one of the things that I actually really liked about it was and and that I I always kind of like felt was a little bit lacking from other combat systems because it kept me engaged while the animation was running. Right. And I thought that that, I always thought that that was super cool. And, um, there weren't, uh, uh, there were some other games that tried to do it and, and were okay with it, but nothing, nothing on the level of, uh, of legend of dragoon. And really that was like, that was like sort of the key to the combat system. If you couldn't like really get the timing down on that, I think, I, I, I think, you know, players who couldn't who couldn't get that like really struggled with that game a lot. Yeah, there was a. Uh, I know one of the. I think Prince Albert, which is a hilarious name, by the yeah. way. His, yeah, uh, it is. One of his moves had like a twenty-two hit combo thing, and mm-hmm. I could hit that thing every time. So I just kicked the final boss's ass in that game. It was it was awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. So. I loved I loved the combo system. It was great, it, it, and it actually like it made it made melee combat like way more useful and feel like more purposeful and, and, and and like a core part of the gameplay. Whereas uh, as opposed to a lot of other RPGs where it's just like attack and, Oh, here's my animation, bot and that's it. Right. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, a stand in for a dice roll. Um, But with this, like, you know, if you've got the timing down, man, you can pump out serious damage, which I mean, yeah, is necessary for the game. um, But can also, it can also really play to the player's advantage too, which I really liked. So, so how did all this lead to FF 11? How did all this lead to FF 11? Well, that's a great question. So uh, I once I developed an interest in RPGs um, and actually, you know, after I played through 10, uh, I I started doing this this really interesting thing where I was I would play uh, earlier games in the series with a couple of friends of mine. And uh, there was actually there were how did that work? There were a couple of there was there was one I think it was Final Fantasy five or six that that had a PS one re release where one controller would control half of the party and right. the other the other controller would control the other half of the party and so we we had played through maybe half of that game together and uh and and it's sort of like like at around that same time we had heard the idea that 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 Square Enix was working on a online Final Fantasy title. And I always wondered, like, how would that work? And I and I and I would always think of, like, you know, how how there was that two player aspect to, to you know, whatever. I think it was either five. I think it was five. I think they both had. have it. But yeah, I think. so. The, yeah, I think they do. I think it may have been a f- just a feature of those versions of that game. But um, 
you know, I, I that's what I that's what always stuck. I was like, I could never I could never like imagine how it would work. And then, you know, like I, I, I didn't really follow the development of it, but I got super, super into like after I got into RPGs, I got super, super into Ultima Online. And um, I actually before but before I got into Ultima Online, there was there was another God, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I, I um, oh, it was like it was sort of like a virtual. I think it was called Virtual Worlds. Maybe that's what it was called. But it was like just a, a chat client that had a world building aspect to it. Just very basic graphic, like you can build walls and like stuff inside of inside of this. Ch- essentially, what is a chat room? Huh. And it it was kind of like an early version of Second Life, where you know little okay. little communities saying. would sprout up and like people could host you know. Uh, server instances of it and you could connect to people's servers and like um, yeah it was sort of like a really 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 protogenic version of that and so the idea of like a virtual space a virtual world uh, uh, got me really like in, I was very young when I had found that uh, uh, I was I was like still into Pokemon right and and so like most like some of the some of the servers were like all Pokemon themed and like you could write the rules in the game so that you could have like a mini game inside of their virtual world. It was kind of a cool little thing that you could do. And so some of these had like kind of like Pokemon themed rules and it was really, it was really pretty creative and cool. And, and so that like that, just that to give you an idea, that's how young I was. I I was like, it was, uh, it was like first generation of Pokemon too. So like, I mean, that'll date me too. Uh, I'm 30 years old, by the way. So like I'm, I would have been all of like 11 or 12 and I was interested in this like virtual, like I was hanging out in basically what was an early version of second life. Like, I don't know what my parents were, were <laughs> doing to supervise me at that point, but they were not, not probably much, doing yeah. their due, due diligence there. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so I, I, that led to me getting really interested and then involved in, uh, Ultima online. A couple of my friends at school were playing it and, uh, because I, I, I was like interested in virtual worlds and like online chat rooms. I was like, oh, that's kind of like, it's like, it's this, uh, it was like this other thing, but it's an actual game. And so I got really involved with that and, when when I got really involved with it, I got uh, super involved with uh, my guild, which was kind of like a role playing guild. And while hanging out with them, I I, I would uh, atten- occasionally like load up a shoutcast streaming server and stream like DJ sessions to them, like for their own private <laughs> like in guild DJ session. And so, like, I think that was sort of the genesis for the whole idea uh, that you could, you know, that you could like narrow cast or broadcast to a very specific subset of people and, and be able to, to kind of cultivate a small audience there. And then, um, this was uh, pre podcast though. Yeah, Yeah. this was, this was definitely pre podcast. Although there was, there was also this cool thing that, um, uh, I, and I don't want to I don't want to give EA any credit for this because EA later bought out the company that that used to run uh, Ultima Online. And I'm blanking on what the company name is. Uh, fuck, I, 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 I would really love to be able to give them proper credit. But in the early days of Ultima Online, there used to be this kind of like web show that they released where it was like people reading the news about events that would happen in the game. And since so many of those events were like kind of like player managed and player run events, it was like they would, you know, they would tell the outcome of things. And it, and it was just this like kind of like meta thing that happened that came out of the, you know, the actual developer that always stuck with me that I thought was the coolest thing ever. Like I would be in high school, you know, li- listening to these like, like, you know, like audio pieces that would come out for the game that I wanted to play because I was sitting around in class thinking about this game that I wanted to play instead of being in class. Nice. And that that kind of idea always sort of stuck with me. And I think that was like the 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 seed of the idea to start doing a podcast for Final Fantasy 11. And, it, it, you know, that's that's sort of like a, a, a long explanation about how. Uh, you know, I still stayed involved with online games. Uh, I played EverQuest. Like I, I, I developed a really 
healthy interest in MMOs and their development. There was another one called Horizons that was very short lived. And I've never heard of and, that one. And died out very quickly. It was actually published by Atari. And it was oh, one wow. of these where, like, they promised a constantly, uh, uh, a consistently dynamic world that would change based on player actions. Like, if you cut down a tree, then that tree would be cut down until it regrows. You know, like, that kind of cool stuff. Like, those kind of forward-thinking ideas got me hooked, but none of that was ever actually delivered uh, in the product. And so, you know, when I finally found Final Fantasy XI, uh, uh, you know, I had played a, a long string of games and I think I, I, I was still sticking to UO and uh, and Final Fantasy XI. I, you know, I had I really liked Final Fantasy and I really liked online games. And so, uh, it, you know, I just I got involved uh, when I was, you know, uh, I think it was a junior, senior in high school uh, played and then went to college. And at college, I met other people who played, which who ended up being, you know, the crew of Limit Break Radio. And that's and and that the germinate that that seed of the idea of like you can do you can you can have a show and, and something that exists kind of like within the meta narrative of the game and and sort of like address it as like this in-game thing. And that's sort of like where the 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 very seed of the idea for Limit Break Radio began. Nice. So uh, speaking of 11 and the show, I mean, how long did you end up playing 11 before you decided to start the podcast? Uh, I think I had been playing for, I mean, probably a good two years at that point. Uh, I hadn't met Kahlo, uh, who Kahlo was really the guy uh, you know, when I met him, it was like, oh, I find I found another Final Fantasy XI player who like gets the stuff that I'm talking about, and 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 we can have really interesting discussions. And it was sort of like like we would talk about it in a way that like our friends would be like, oh, that's this is interesting, and and like we want to get into this too. And that's how how we ended up getting them into it. So I didn't uh, I didn't get into podcasts until a couple years ago. I mean, when did you guys start? Like 2006. 2006. Or? Yeah, was. Right. Uh, was when we had started the podcast and uh, you know i i guess i guess that had uh, that had really come around because uh i was uh, you know uh we had all we had all went to the same college and at college i was studying uh broadcast communications and political science and um you know a lot of a, a lot of what you think about when you're studying broadcasting is Oh my God! What am I going to do once I graduate? Because there are literally no jobs in broadcasting, right? Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like the slow uh, death of radio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I mean, if we really want to, I mean, hell, if we really want to get into it, we can we can get into it. But you know, jobs in in broadcasting, both on on television and in radio, uh, have just been going away. Uh, it's it's so much easier now with computers and digital recording. Uh, to be able to send audio to other places uh, quickly and easily. And so you end up with, uh, you know, uh, five or six cities in the United States with one voice on it. You know, one person who's who's doing all of that work that would normally do the work of, that, you know, five or six people would have to do. And and that cuts down on on jobs big time. And then, you know, you've got this. Uh, um, you don't always need somebody who's running the programming like that used to be a very real thing. Computers, you couldn't just load up a playlist and have that run overnight. Press shuffle. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you, used, you used to have to have somebody sitting there the entire time. And uh, and, and, the, and so, yeah, like jobs are just not it's not a healthy industry. What were pod, so, what were podcasts like back then? I got to um, Podcasts back then, yeah. uh, it, you know, it was it was it was very much an emerging an emerging idea. But there were, you know, like the charge back then was was very much being led by This American Life. Um, it was there was a lot of like really established uh, broad terrestrial broadcast properties that were kind of making the jump over to podcasts, NPR that, like and, stuff. And, yeah, yeah, and, and kind of becoming successful that way. Um, but then there were also this was like this was just around the time that WTF with Mark Marin was starting to 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 come around. I think that started in in 2007, and that was really as a as a result of of the demise of Air, Air America, which was where Mark Marin had hosted a show prior to that. 
And, um, right. you know, as as we kind of all know, know the legend of how WTF started, he started it in his, uh, you know, in his garage. And so it was sort of like, you know, all of these different places, all of these different podcasts were sort of springing up. And I and, and really, you know, kind of actually what what sort of drove me to get involved in Final Fantasy 11 podcasting, because I mean, I, I was aware of podcasts in general just because of my in, my overall interest in media and the way that media trends go like that's that's something I'm interested in outside of my work with with Limit Break Radio. Like that's something I've been interested in since um you know, since I was like 17, 18 years old, uh, you know, studying and researching media trends and media growth and how media organizations operate um, has has always been, you know, just it's 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 been a huge obsession of mine to the point where I bore other people with the nonsense that I that I <laughs> discover or that I research about it. But, um, you know, so I, I was I was aware of this emerging trend. And the other thing was, is that. As a Final Fantasy XI player, I was seeking out that same experience that I had w- with Ultima Online with that really creative kind of news show. And it made, you know, since that stuck in my brain, it made me wonder, OK, well, what exists out there? You know, because Final Fantasy, I, I, I was not like, you know, I was not like a beta tester for Final Fantasy XI. I didn't get it even at launch. Like I got it maybe, at, you know, a couple of months after it had launched, maybe a ye- even a, a close to a year after it had launched. And so um, it, it made me wonder, like, OK, what exists out there in terms of like, you know, I, I want to listen to people talk about Final Fantasy XI while I walk to class what is there out there for me? What was and, there? Uh, there was a, there was one other show at that time called, I think it was, uh, well, I'm sorry, there were a couple of other shows. There was a show called Mega Elixir, which I think had wrapped up their production at that point. And then there was Pet Food Alpha. Uh, they're still that, around, aren't they? I think it's uh, beta Yeah, now. they're called Pet Food Beta. Oh, and Pet the, Food and Beta, I th- yeah. I think they, they have different hosts now, but yeah, they, uh, they are still around. But Fusion X still does a podcast for... Final Fantasy 14 called Aetherite Radio. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, which, which was actually something that I had, uh, that I had helped establish, helped him establish, uh, when, when they had gotten that off the ground, but we can get to that. When yeah, we, we will. I got a question about that later. Yeah. When so we get to the, to the FF 14 stuff, but, uh, but actually, so I had found pet food alpha and, uh, you know, I, 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 I liked the show. I enjoyed the show. Uh, enough that I actually had at one point sent an email to Fusion X and I was like, hey, I'm a radio producer. Uh, you know, this I, I make uh, imaging and intros and outros in my spare time and I do voice work. Uh, you know, is it, it, I'd love to be involved with your show. Is there anything, uh, you know, that I could do for you guys? And I heard nothing back. Like I didn't get a response <laughs> at all. And uh, and I'll be honest, I felt a little bit dogged out by it. And um and I was like, all right, well, you know, fuck it. Like, oh, you know, make my own. Yeah, that's kind of, well, you know, it's like your show's all right, but fuck <laughs> it. I, I, can, I can do something better, uh, you know. And and so that was sort of like kind of the driving reason that that made me think like like between the the, you know, the friends that were getting into it and my descri- my discussions uh, with Kahlo. And and everything like that, because I don't I don't know. I don't know that Kahlo even had like a whole ton of aspiration to to do something like this. And it, and it was really like, yeah, it was sort of like the rejection that I had gotten <laughs> was sort of like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to do it like, yeah, yeah. like I get, it got me like really gung ho about it. And so, um, you know, I approached Kahlo about doing the idea. In fact, he at the time he was he was doing a play. He was doing a version of Romeo and Juliet. And uh, and I had had this idea and uh, me and my girlfriend at the time uh, traveled out to to where he was doing the the play and the performance and brought the intro like I had made like a rough version of the LBR intro and uh, and put it together. And uh, and I remember playing it for him out in the car like I had I had talked to him about the idea and he was like he was sort of lukewarm on it like yeah, yeah maybe like I don't know if if I can devote a ton of time to something like that but it sounds like a lot of fun like this might be kind of cool and then like when I played the intro for him it got him to be all gung-ho about it like yeah this is gonna be awesome like <laughs> you know what I mean and so we started to put the crew really put the crew together and uh, uh, over the summer, we, we had sort of, um, uh, you know, just our enthusiasm about the game and stuff. Uh, we had uh, 
Uh, we had gotten my roommate uh, Sale uh, and then his roommate Argent Lam uh, interested in the game, and they were playing it uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty, pretty regularly. And so, you know, we 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 approached them about the idea, and they they were kind of into it. And so that was like the first year of Limit Break Radio. Is uh, you know we. We would take um, we would take some of uh, the old equipment. I had a band at one point. It was a, a really terrible punk band, and uh, I took some of the old equipment that I had from that. It was a PA head and uh, uh, a bunch of stage mics and hundred foot uh, mic cables, Oof. and that was the original setup for Limit Break Radio. We just told, we hauled that stuff into the basement of the dorm that we all lived in. And set it up with a uh, with a laptop to record it and nice. kind of just made it up as we went along. And uh, and yeah, that that's that was that was pretty much how the, the whole thing started. That's- and I have to give credit where credit is due. Kahlo is the one that came up with the uh, with the brilliant name Limit Break Radio. Oh, uh, I can't I, I tend I tend to come up with really, really. What was the original names. name? Uh, sorry. What, what names did you come up with? Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, come I, don't, on. I, I don't know that I even I, I it's been <laughs> yeah. honestly, it's been so long. You know, like it, it's fortunate that you guys are kind of catching me today and asking me about the history of the show, because just last night on uh, on our Twitch stream, we had played probably like three hours worth of clips from the old 11 days. Like we we had some set aside like of our, you know, like quote unquote greatest hits mm-hmm. uh, from 1.0. And so we yeah, we sat around listening to those and commenting about those for about three hours. And it is shocking the level of, of stuff that you forget about a show that you've been doing solidly for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like there's the stuff that just fades into obscurity is amazing. And they were remembering stuff that I was just like, Oh my God, you're right. That did happen like that. Like I, you know, like there's, there's no, I, there's no way that I could possibly even, I mean like maybe like level up radio or, uh, you know, like I, I don't, I, you know, like, I don't know. I think link shell, I think link shell radio was one that we had toyed around with, but there was another podcast that did like four episodes under that name. Uh, So we uh, could, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Like how often does that happen? Right? Like you come up with a great name and then you're like, Oh, the, another person did a, podcast What's, about uh, that in 2004 for like four episodes we were looking at like a spinoff podcast about legend of zelda i was gonna get some of my other like friends to go host it and uh we thought of oh, what was it a hey listen right uh, yeah a legend of zelda podcast and someone else I'm sure did, that's a thing someone else did it on youtube and we were yeah. like oh, no yeah. what's funny yeah. though is uh <laughs> you guys' origin story is like essentially the same where joe is you and i am uh uh, Callow is that Callow. the other guy? Yeah, Callow. Yeah, yeah, because so he's the like the band and the equipment. The and band, the equipment. You came to me. You're <laughs> like, hey, there's no podcasts out there about the main series except for you know the big one in in Britain. Yeah. And then <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it seems fun. I want to play the series anyway. And then I seriously thought Limit Break Radio. That's a cool. That'd be a cool thing. Or Limit Break. And then we look it up and we're like, damn it, so we're taken. <laughs> that was seriously one of the suggestions I, I gave. But. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we we were, and and the thing is, is that we almost did. Here's actually, this is something you just knocked something loose. Look at that. Uh, here's we almost didn't go with Limit Break Radio, and there's a very important reason why. It's a great name, and I'm so glad that we stuck with it, given everything in FF14, how how uh, uh, crucial Limit Breaks are to that story. Um, but I, I feel I feel the need to point this out. Nowhere in FF11 do limit breaks exist as a thing. Like <laughs> that was actually a really, really terrible choice for a name That's for an FF11 point. podcast. I guess they're like TP moves, right? No, the, no, those are weapon skills, homie. Oh, That's weapon not, skills. Yeah, right. those those are limit breaks. The only <laughs> thing, the only thing that was even called a limit break were these were these they were they're technically oh, called the, Genkai uh, quests, which were the the quests the that uh, the level cap quests yeah. that That's would right. get you from fifty to fifty five or whatever. And and that was the those were the only thing that were ever at any time ever called limit breaks. And 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 that was one of the things that I was concerned with was I was like limit break radio is a fantastic name and I love it. But like Doesn't limit breaks exist. aren't a part of this game. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I'm so glad that that was the choice that we ended up going with uh, in the long run, because, you know, and 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 this was Kahlo's argument at the time that limit break is such a. 
uh, uh, a strong, uh, you know, powerful thing in the Final Fantasy universe. Right. You, you think Limit Break. You think Final Fantasy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's it's so intrinsically linked to Final Fantasy that... You know, we're the the message is being delivered, and and the name is too good to let go. And he was totally right; he was absolutely right. So, so how um, did how did the show build? You you started this in the basement of your dorm. Yes. How, what what did it become in those first couple of years? Like, how did it start? Like, with you just you guys in a basement versus what it became after like a couple like two years into the run. Yeah. yeah so, um, original. So we had always envisioned the show uh, as. A bit of a Howard Stern ripoff. I, you know, I come from Detroit, so uh, my big point of context for a morning show was Drew and Mike. Um, but back, you know, back when I was like, uh, you know, when I was a kid and growing up, and and I I recognize that this has changed a lot now. But there used to be regional morning shows, um, and in some instances there still are. But there used to be these great regional morning shows that would be really fantastic in their own right. Right. Like they they just they had a foothold in their in their city. Detroit was kind of like that. Like Howard Stern tried to come into Detroit, could never move the needle in in the city because Drew and Mike were like they were loved by by Detroit. And so that was really my big kind of point of contact for um, for influence in terms of talk radio and 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 how I put together a show. And honestly, you know, I've done a lot of other shows besides Limit Break Radio. Uh, I did a uh, a punk rock show for years called Adrenaline, uh, and and had a couple of co hosts that that did that with me. Um, weirdly, all of them named Kevin. I don't know how that ended up working out. <laughs> um, that was totally unintentional, but yeah, that all happened to be like my co host was always a Kevin. And we then, got we got two Caleb's that show up. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, get an, it, we get an it, extra it, Caleb, and it gets weird. It, it's so well, but it was like it, like I did the show for a year with it was it, it, you know it was me and Kevin, and then I did the the show for a year alone, and then I met an entirely different Kevin to come do the show with me the next year. You know what I mean? Like it was just like <laughs> I don't know, I maybe it's I should just Kevin. audition Kevin's, yeah. Um, but yeah, I did that. I did that for like three three and a half years. Uh, I did adrenaline and that was that structure was totally ripped off of Drew and Mike. I was like, it's Drew and Mike, but uh, with playing punk rock. Uh, And then, um, you know, Limit Break Radio is basically just Drew and Mike talking about video games. Uh, Refresh, uh, which was a show that I did kind of in the interim between the 11 version and 14 version of Limit Break Radio is just Drew and Mike with hip hop. And, you know, like that's that's but that like that's like really my kind of my 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 bread and butter like where that's my wheelhouse. That's where I feel the most comfortable with like a crew of people and, um, you know, n- maybe not necessarily playing music, but I, lo- I also do like playing music. Uh, so, you know, structurally, that's where we had started in that first year. It was like, OK, we're going to, you know, uh, um we also we when we also when we started the 11 show, there was also this very real thing in FF 11 where information about the game was kind of scant and, and spread out around a lot of different places on the Internet. Was this uh, pre FF 11 wiki? Um, it, no, because the no? FF 11 okay. wiki was definitely around because that provided literally every that was, piece of content. That was like, very <laughs> important to us like a, f- yeah. a few months ago. That, that was, was the my... only place that we could go. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it's sort of like that now where like all the information you find is out of date. Like it was that's kind of how yeah. it was back then, too. And of course, the game provides literally no context for oh, anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. They're like, we know. Yes. <laughs> It's it's so every every any any command from an NPC is the most vague thing, and you're like, uh, what the f- oh my going God. into the menu to trade the item to him. I was like, fuck. Oh, I know it's infuriating. <laughs> so anyway, so because that was such a huge aspect of FF11, we were like, okay, there should be a didactic portion of the show. Like like w- the show should not just be. You know, like it should be entertaining and we want it to be entertaining, but like the bulk of our content can come from things that we don't necessarily have to experience firsthand because that was that was one of the things that we were actually really self-conscious about when we started the show. None of us were didn't level, know enough. N- yeah, none of us were level even level 75. None of us had even hit the level cap when we had started Limit Break Radio. And so we were like really self-conscious of the fact that like we don't know a whole lot about this game. And and so 
you know, there's an opportunity like I think for a while we approached it as, as, as like there's an opportunity not only for us to teach people like teach newer players about the game that they may find confusing. But there's also this opportunity for us to learn vicariously through other people through their context and what they bring to the show, which is why in the 11 days we had such a focus on, on guest hosts. We had a different guest host for nearly every episode that would be there to talk about a specific thing. I was going to, I was going to be outside of our range, our range of context. Yeah. It it seemed like you guys went through a lot of co-hosts. We did, but what, well, they were guest hosts. It was sort of like mm-hmm. they were the guest hosts were meant to be transitory. Um, the actual hosts of the show. Yes, we did. We did go through a lot of different lineup changes. That mm-hmm. is true, especially uh, in the later years. Um, but uh, but the, the guest hosts, the idea behind that is that they were always they would change each and every episode. So, um yeah, that and that would that the idea really there was to, you know, like we know we're not experts, so we're going to bring somebody on who is. Right. Um, and and so that that was where the very, uh, you know, again, didactic, very, um, you know, like we, we sought to like teach people things and inform and uh, instead of entertain. And I think that's what you know, that's kind of what led to some of those episodes being so long and and bloated and um that's you what know, we're all about yeah and kind of and kind of boring like the, a lot of those 11 shows are literally uh you know like again some guests were better than others some guests were really animated and really um uh you know could talk about their points very cogently other guests we had to do some you know have we had to do some heavy lifting for and if you're already you don't have the context if you're not sure footed there um it's like you're just literally reading off of a wiki page and that got boring like that that got boring not just for i'm i think the audience but that got boring for us to do as uh, you know just making the show Mm mm-hmm so uh, you were talking about guest hosts. Now let's talk about like actual co-hosts. What was like? Walk us through some of the co-hosts you went through before the FF11 uh, Limit Break Radio run, uh, of course, yeah, ended. Yeah. So um, our original lineup was myself, Kahlo, Sale, and Arjit Lam. Which one and was the soft-spoken guy? I remember that guy at, at the beginning of a lot of your. Yes, yeah, Sale Sale had uh, had a, a really unique voice and uh, okay. was was soft spoken. Yeah, that's that's Sale. What happened to that uh, guy? Uh, I actually saw him two days ago. I helped nice. him. I helped him build uh, a new computer that he's uh, hopefully going to be using for uh, for some streaming purposes. But he's still around. He just doesn't play FF14. Um, he is uh, a competitive Smash player. And uh, and he's been a competitive Smash player ever since the day I met him. Wow. And uh, and I, I, I'll tell you what he uh, uh, it was dis- I, I, I liked Super Smash Brothers kind of before I started living with him. He was he was my roommate <laughs> in college too much. Uh, I, I'll never play it again. He <laughs> he's a peach player. So not only, like it's not just that he kicks your ass like he just he kills like wipes the floor with you and he does it with peach and he does it in a way that you, makes you really feel bad about yourself <laughs> he's it's amazing to watch it's totally incredible to watch when he's just like when he is on and like on a roll uh but you do not want to be playing against him <laughs> so uh that's that's where he has been devoting a lot of his time and attention recently has been to uh, smashing and and being a little bit more involved with the regional community, and uh, you know he played FF14 for a little bit. He played the the 1.0 version of FF14, uh, but you know didn't really stick with it. And so um, you know if he if he you know if he possibly has more free time in the future, he said that he'd like to get into it. Um, so we may we may very well see a return of of sale uh, to Limit Break Radio yet. But uh, yeah, he's just been doing other stuff. Yeah, that's just the one guy when I was listening to your original stuff after we we of course played FF11 like I don't know how many months ago, like 5 6 months ago. Yeah, about 6. And yeah, uh, I saw some of your let's plays. Yeah, they were they were really good. <laughs> we got we of course did all the Bastok missions just to say that we kind of beat the game. Yeah. Um and I remember going back and listening and being like this guy is not on Limit Break Radio anymore, so I, I wanted to ask. Um 
Yeah, yeah, he's but he's still around. He's definitely still a presence. Um, the last time he was on one of our streams was uh, was New Year's. He came came out for uh, a big LBR reunion New Year's Eve party, which was uh, that was super fun. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, he's he's definitely still around. So uh, Arjit Lam, though, I'm sure that was going to be your next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arjit Lam was the uh, was actually the very first person. And by the way, I, I want to mention Sale stuck around uh, all the way to almost the very end. I think he he may have been absent from the last three or four episodes in the FF11 days, uh, but he he never formally made an exit. He just got kind of busy with other stuff. Um, the, the first person to actually formally exit the show was Arjit Lam. And, uh, he, uh, I, I think he got over, just kind of overwhelmed with the project. I mean, we were all going to, we were all going to school at the time and, uh, you know, trying to balance doing this show and, 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 you know, at the, also a, a big, a big part of the FF 11 days of limit break radio. Uh, we, we had a forum, um, that got quite popular and populated and we felt, uh, responsible for what happened on those forums and they were drama magnets. Oh, really? Oh yeah. It was, uh, it was really bad to the point where it stressed a lot, a lot of us out in, in real life to, to degrees that that really like it probably shouldn't have. You know what I mean? Like it was not it was none of us were ready for it. Like we kind of like put it put forums there as an afterthought. Like we started doing the show really not even expecting that many people to 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 pick up on it. You know what I mean? And and it like after I think it was after. Oh, Four or five episodes. I mean, we had just a very basic hosting package on, you know, like a whatever web server. Mm -hmm. And uh, after four episodes, we were maxing out our bandwidth within two days of dropping an episode for the month. Like like our site would be up for two days and then it would be down for 28 because we would max out our (laughs) bandwidth because so many people were hitting our 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 MP3s. Wow. Uh, Was that a good thing or a bad thing? (laughs) It's uh, it's one. It's a good problem. You know, like we. We actually just went through this again. Uh, we just saw an, another uptick in our uh, in our audience numbers and uh, DreamHost, which was actually uh, when we had this problem the first time, this bandwidth problem. We moved to DreamHost servers. Those that was in like early to like like uh, we launched in August of 2006. I would say that it was like September October. We were jumping to DreamHost like it was that quick Mm -hmm. that we that, uh, you know, we were putting out episodes and they were getting that popular. And DreamHost had this wonderful package at the time where uh, it had a terabyte of bandwidth right out of the gate for nine ninety nine a month. And then every month you were subscribed after that, uh, it gave you another terabyte. So like. It was just like the best Holy hosting shit. package that we could that we could imagine. And of course, that became limited right now. Like it became unlimited at some point. And, and like that's yeah, that was just the host that that was just the host package that they that they gave us. But so like it, it's sort of funny because that that problem became became repeated just kind of in a different way more recently uh, because we we saw an uptick in our uh, in our audience numbers and the memory that was allocated to our site. Because uh, we were on a shared server plan, uh, we were maxing out the memory because so many people were were hitting our MP3s on release day. So I would be I'd be trying to log into my own website, getting internal 500 errors and 503 errors. Wow! <laughs> because the memory was maxed out, and and it, you know, and it would be like that for like three or four days. And so we had to we had to bump up to a VPS, and we had a problem. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, <clears throat> We, we know about that, right? No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we host our stuff on Libsyn, and uh, we got the website. We just switched our website over to DreamHost, so hopefully they'll treat us well. Yeah, good choice, <laughs> good choice. Yeah, no, you're in you're in good hands with those folks because uh, you know they they try because a VPS is actually you know like it's it can get pretty expensive depending on what your needs are. And being a show being a show that's been around for ten years, we have pretty significant archives, and their restricting factor on their VPS is how much disk space you get per per plan. Right. Um, and so, uh, it, you know, to, much to their credit, they tried very hard to work with us to optimize the site uh, 
uh, on the shared plan for all of the traffic that we were getting. And it was just far too overwhelming for for their uh, hardware. And as soon as we sw- and, you know, as soon as we switched over to the VPS, all of that that problem just disappeared. Um, so, you know, they they tried to work with us to, uh, you know, to, to work with what we had. And then when it was clear that it was just like, look, you know, this is what you're going to have to do to serve your audience. It, you know, that's what we, that's what we did. Um, and, and so all credit to DreamHost, they, they did their due diligence in, uh, in working with us. So, nice. uh, yeah, you're in, you're in good hands. <laughs> you, they'll, they'll treat you well. Um, uh, so I got to ask, um, back to the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was going through, um, uh, some of the, the former, former voices. So yeah, mm-hmm. Arjit Lam left. That was, uh, after about a year. Um, and then it was around that same time, maybe a little bit before then that we in, had introduced, uh, we had actually introduced the idea of an intern character early on in the show. Uh, because that's something that, that like, all, it seems like all radio shows have, uh, all like all of my favorite ones have. They have like some off mic character who's kind of a, a you know kind of a dim witted boob that the, all of the hosts fuck with the entire time, and uh, the, and it was really clown. Was, yeah. Yeah, 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 the clown. And it was really important to me that 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 role be present on Limit Break Radio because I just love that dynamic. And uh, early on, we had uh, we had we had a, a friend of ours, Wally. Uh, who we had asked to do it. Uh, but the thing was, we were like, you don't even, you don't have to be in studio. Like we knew him. He didn't even live in the state and we just wanted to use him, his personality and his presence in his name. And he was going to be like the silent intern so that we would always just like, we would play off of him and make him do stupid shit in the studio. And we thought he had a re- you know, really thick skin could kind of roll with the punches. And that's why we, we had asked him to do it. Turns out he had thinner skin than anyone and got super defensive at everything and was like absolutely the wrong choice to, 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 to do that and caused all kinds of like personal drama and like internal conflict. And so it was just a disaster. And we asked our friend uh, Juxta basically uh, if he would mind doing it uh, because he had context for MMOs, but wasn't necessarily an FF11 player. He was a big wow a, a big wow player and a big wow raider. Uh, he was he was super into the end game wow scene, and so we asked him to do we we asked him to fill this role because he we knew he was someone he was a a a, a personality a person that could uh, roll with the punches and and understand the joke and and be in on the joke and be in on the gag and kind of take the abuse and he would also be able to be there to kind of defend himself which which we recognized was a mistake with Wally that you know we didn't even give him. Like we were still, we didn't even really understand what we were doing at that time. So we didn't even, we couldn't even really predict, you know, how things like the audience would react to him or, or, or the things that they would say to him on the forums that would kind of be out of line or surprising or be like, whoa. And like after, you know, after you do this for a while and you, you know, you, you get an audience, like you kind of learn like that's kind of what happens. Um, but none of us knew to like prepare him for that. So, uh, you know, with Juxta, he just fell into the role completely uh, naturally and was so good at it. And in fact, uh, you know, became such a staple and a loved part of the show that it, I think that's what really motivated him to become interested in playing ff11 more and at one point he was playing more of ff11 than anyone else on the cast and knew more about the game than anyone else on the cast and so um it, you know it, it was it was it, it was kind of cool like how he you know like we didn't we never asked him like hey man like play a couple hours of ff11 just to kind of you know like so you know what the what to talk about on the show or something like it, he just totally got into it because uh, you know, he really, he really genuinely liked, uh, the role he had on the show and really genuinely liked, like, you know, doing the show and found it fun. Um, and obviously he's still involved. He's a full, yeah, he's stuck around. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, <laughs> he, uh, he is, I mean, he's a rock man. Like, uh, you know, it, I, and I know it sounds weird. Like he was, he was always, you know, there was never. In in terms of our friendship dynamic, like off off the mic, like there was never he was never like the dude that we picked on when we were all hanging out together. Right. Like that was not his dynamic. So it was it was totally 
it's totally cool to see him fall into that role and be awesome and, and hilarious and commit to that role. Uh, when, you know, our off mic dynamic is, nice. is actually quite, he adds a lot of humor to the show now. He does. Oh, totally. He does. He's hysterical. And now, you know, now that we've given him uh purview over the drops, he's become he's right. becoming really yeah. good at that. Um, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's, that's really like, I've heard legitimate radio shows on terrestrial radio that can't get that shit down and he's doing a great job. So yeah, I, I really, uh, it, it's, it's been really cool to watch him like, you know, and he's not, he's not like a public personality or like a broadcaster either. You know what I mean? Like, uh, with Kahlo, he was at least, he was studying to become a actor. Like he was, he's a performer, right. uh, with Juxta, he, I think, I don't remember what he studied accounting. Uh, I think that's what he, what he studied. And yeah, so that like, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to watch him, to watch him be, become, uh, 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 and, and grow into such an amazing performer has really, I mean, it's been really fantastic. He's great. I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's genuinely one of the funniest people I know. And he brings so much humor to the table that, you know, like it's, it's tough to do a show when, uh, when he's not available. It, it, it's, it's, it's tough to do a show when, you know, like I, the magic of limit break radio is really all of the five of us as a crew. And we're together. Uh, I, I think that, I think that something is lost when any one of us can't, can't make it to an episode. And, and so that can be, uh, that can be kind of frustrating for me sometimes to be honest with you, but yeah, Juxta, um, Juxta obviously stayed involved with the show. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of how it went from there. Uh, we had gamer, uh, who, was technically a host, although never really was very much of a presence on air. Uh, and, and really, we made him a host because he was the only other Final Fantasy XI player that we knew on campus yeah. that could come that could come in and do the show. And you live. needed that. You needed that full kind of everybody in the room talking together. We, we have a totally different dynamic on our show where it's just me and Caleb. Yeah, so we, we're both the... Uh, we break each other down all the time. Oh, we're yeah. cutting each other off, but we do not have the same amount of energy as you guys have, and we're kind of jealous of that, honestly. Yeah. It, it's it's Yeah, but like that level of energy is easier to maintain when it's shared between five people. Yes. You know, and 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 also and also we have a problem we and and, it, and we're getting better about this. But um, especially when we, uh, you know, when we started getting acclimated to our new equipment setup, uh, we had a lot of problems with crosstalk where we would just have people, two people talking at once or three people talking, trying to talk over each other, which, uh, you know, like we're getting I think we're getting better about. But, you know, when you when you only have two. Uh, that's, that's a bit of an easier dynamic to work with. And it's not like, you know, two, two is a good dynamic. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of really fantastic radio shows that are, uh, you know, that they have, that, that have only really two voices on there. And, um, uh, you know, it, it can, it can be really successful. So, you know, like I, I, I although I, I will give us, I will give us this, you know, even though the magic of LBR is having all five of us in the studio, even when we do a show like we did last week where we only have three people, we still are able to maintain a very good, pretty consistent show. Uh, and that's something that that I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty proud of and pretty pleased with. Um, and and yeah, so, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's how, uh, you know, Gamer got involved with the show. And he he literally just disappeared like we I mean, like. Like he's, I think he's a dentist somewhere. I, I mean, like I see him, I'm still friends with him on Facebook. I see him post every once in a while. He, it was funny, it, not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago, he said he was listening to songs from the FF11 soundtrack and was getting all nostalgic and tagged me and Nika and, and Kahlo in a post. And, but that's all we've ever heard from him in like wow. the time since the show. He, we're, it's not a joke that <laughs> we call literally you back. don't know where he is. <laughs> we have no idea what that dude's up to. Oh, um, wow. Although, although to 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 bring Arjitlam full circle, though, uh, that dude is uh, it, he he lives in I don't know where in Asia, but he became a teacher, like an English teacher, out in uh, in in like China or Japan or somewhere out in in uh, in one of those Asian countries, and uh, that's what he does now, and uh, seems to be very very happy doing that. So, um, you know, uh, his. His involvement with uh, with Limit Break Radio didn't seem to impact his trajectory at all, fortunately, because, you know, honestly, 
if I, this is not this is not limit break radio is not something you put on your resume delicately because an employer going to the site and hitting play it's like i don't what yeah. is this what the fuck you know? <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so yeah fortunately we we didn't you know we didn't harm his reputation too much uh let's see who else um after that i think we ended up uh, well. We had Iru Falian as uh, as an intern who was um, you know all, he was another roommate of mine. Uh, he was mine and sales roommate, and uh, he was around for a little bit. Um, didn't make. I mean, you know, he was just there for a while uh, and just a voice, and then disappeared. And then uh, we made Nika a host because um, she 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 was another one. She lived in uh, in the same college town that we did. And uh, that was for a, a, a pretty limited time. And then it kind of became clear that um, scheduling was becoming a big issue. And so uh, we had launched uh, the Limit Break Radio Network and uh, decided that we were going to allow anyone who hosted a show. Because, I mean, if we gave you a show on the network, then you could probably hold it down as a host for LBR. Uh, we started to tap them as hosts uh, for, you know, uh, for the show. And that's where things started to kind of get a bit chaotic and and break down all those offshoot shows and yeah we had we had a lot of uh uh supplementary shows and stuff like that um we 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 wanted to try to expand our scope and cover more of ff11 which for a game that was kind of shrinking it was not exactly the greatest uh content strategy long term but we did it but but there was this very real thing that we had, you know, we had this community, this forum community that had grown and there was a lot of really talented people that were in there that were expressing, you know, that they wanted to make podcasts. And I think the idea there was, well, instead of instead of letting them be competitors, why don't we right. offer Join them Join us? <laughs> yeah. Why don't we offer them access to our audience so that they have more of a more of a potential for accessing people uh and, 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 you know, we get to grow our brand. And so that's where you got shows like Elegantly Edwith and He Says, She Says and Voices of On a Deal, uh, which all of those shows were like they were headed up by people that were, you know, just like fans of Limit Break Radio. You know, they, Tom, too, got definitely way more involved with the production of the show a little bit later on. Uh, but, yeah, like. Like that was just people approaching me with good ideas. And I was like, OK, well, do you want do you want to do a show on on the LBR network? And that's where that idea had kind of come out. And then because we had those those talented people doing shows like that, we also thought, OK, well, why don't we take the talent that we have internally and make shows for them, too, which is where you got things like Simply Juxta and the Rogues done. And uh, and it was a good I, I think it was a good idea. Um, you know, because we did have a lot of momentum uh, back in those days and a lot of people were listening. But uh, in the end, it was a lot of work and it spread ourselves very, very, very thin. So how did this uh, all how did this all come to an end? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the good stuff. <laughs> that's that's a fantastic question. It petered. To be honest, it petered out is what happened. So um, I was maintaining the production of Limit Break Radio uh, all the way up until when I moved out of my apartment uh, that I lived in in college and then had to move back in with my parents and my girlfriend at the time moved in with me and my parents. So my intention was, I mean, my, my when I had moved back in, it's, it's just sort of weird. This is like a really personal, like, like part of my life that I don't really kind of talk about. I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. So, so this is, this I've, is a, I've looked, I wanted to know how the original show ended and I yeah, can never find anything. It's not much. Yeah, there, <laughs> there really anything, isn't. There really isn't. Um, cause it's, it is, it's sort of an intensely personal story about, about what happened. So, um, during, during the recording of episode number 64, which I think was the last one, mm-hmm. you actually hear me duck out early. Like I, I duck out in the last hour of the show and I let Juxta and Tom to wrap the show. And that was the end. That was the end of the FF 11 run. And, uh, what happened was <laughs> I had gotten a phone call in the middle of that show from my girlfriend at the time who told me that her, uh, uh cause we had both, we had both just moved home from college and we were both kind of getting acclimated to, living with our parents again. Um, you know, she lived pretty close to me 
we had kind of grown up in, in a similar area. Like we didn't meet at college. We actually met before college and then went to the same college. I, I, it was a 10 year long relationship. Uh, and wow. Uh, yeah, yeah I know. Right. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we met, we met in high school. We went to college the entire time, stayed together the entire time. And then, um, you know, she moved in, uh, we, 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 we moved back home. And then, so I got this call in the middle of episode 64 where she goes, my sister just punched me in the face and I no longer feel safe at my house. Will you come pick me up so I can stay with you? That's why I left an hour early on episode number 64. Real shit. Hashtag real talk. Here. Wow. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Thanks yeah. for sharing that though. That's, that really shed some light there. Did you just decide never to do another episode after that? No, or? no, 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 no. That's not, that's not what happened. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, no, 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 like, no. Damn. So I, so I went and I got, <laughs> I, I went, I got her and she started to stay with me at, mm-hmm. at my parents' house. And, you know, first of all, like, like you, as you guys know, you need an entirely silent environment to, to record a good show. Right. And yes, we, <laughs> and, and, and we were sharing a single room in my parents' house and she, she was never really comfortable with my parents and had a very strained relationship with them for some reason that she had invented in her head. And she was just really shitty. She was just like really like she couldn't. <laughs> she like it was it was like unreasonable to ask her to leave my room for a couple of hours while I did a show, or to ask her to be completely silent. Like that was that was apparently an unfair request. And so the fights, the fighting that would ensue when I would try to do a show or try to schedule a show were so bad that that made me basically avoid wanting to do shows anymore until I came up with refresh, which, uh, which, which had, which included kind of included her participation in it. And that seemed to be able to satiate her, but because I was doing refresh and, 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 and honestly, I, I will be honest. I had lost all interest in FF 11. I was not playing FF 11, 14, 1.0 had, had kind of launched and that was underwhelming. I was very, very disappointed with Square Enix overall. I was oh, bummed yeah. out. On, I was, I was, you know, bummed out on the product. I did, you know, there was no direction that 1.0 was going. I mean, I, I still did maintain in those days I was maintaining doing Aetherite radio and uh, I had started up Refresh, which I had started on the Gamer Escape radio network. And between those two, between doing, doing those two shows, it was like I had every intention on doing a Limit Break radio episode. And in fact, I, I really wanted to do a goodbye, a final episode where we said goodbye. See, and that's we, what I was looking for. I was like, that, when did they? Yeah, and that that <laughs> offered closure and like the opportunity just never presented itself, right? Like it was just between the other stuff that I was doing and this bitch of a girlfriend that I had to deal with and living in my fucking parents' house. Like I, I, and I was unhappy as a person. I was not, you know, like that was not a particularly good time in my life. It was just like, it was not something that I could do, you know, like I could, I, I couldn't do it emotionally. I couldn't find time to do it. I couldn't do it physically. Like there was just, there was nothing in me to be able to, yeah. to bring that to closure. Um, you know, uh, all of us had kind of like all of the different crew members had like moved away to like different cities. I, I, I hadn't, I, I hadn't had a whole lot of contact with them in that, in that time. And it was just like, it sort of, it became it, at, at some point after some amount of time, after some good amount of time, it seemed like, it was better to just let it peter out than to bother all of these people to like do a last hurrah. Like I had every intention in my heart to do it, you know? And like, it was like, I got to do that at some point. I got to offer some closure. And I, you know, I tried to, I tried to put out some, uh, you know, put out some, uh, some like apologies or explanations in terms of blog posts, but that was it. I, I could never, I could never really ever bring myself to like record a final goodbye. And there was always a part of me that kind of like wanted to pick it back up too. Right. And well, like, and that's funny that you mentioned that because I chose the podcast over the woman. <laughs> so yeah. Did you really, Caleb? Well, kind of. Yeah. Like it was consuming all of my time because we're going through the entire series and yeah. I, I'm like, man, I want to, 
I want to play this game. I don't want to just beat it. I want to beat the shit out of it. I want to try to do every little mission and like just hundreds of hours going into these damn things. And yeah, shit goes downhill when they start trying to <laughs> interfere with the show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I totally know what you mean. There have been, you know, there's always slumps after a while when, you know, it's just like, God, it's this, uh, it's all old stuff and you just kind of yeah, get into well- these downers. Totally, and and then so and I think I sort of feel like that's what refresh was. It was just like God. I want to talk about anything else. I don't care what it is. Yes, I'll smoke weed on air and fucking play <laughs> hip hop and talk about politics and be really inappropriate because that's what my friends wanted to do. Like those, that, that was the show that my friends wanted to do, and I was like, fuck yeah, I'll be along for that ride. That sounds like a whole lot of fun, and that's what we did, and it was and it was super fun, but like nobody really wanted to listen to it. And and especially nobody, none of the LBR audience really wanted to to listen to it. And uh, I kind of thought like, hey, yeah, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot the audience that I grew during Limit Break Radio. That did not happen. They don't follow. <laughs> they don't follow. All. We know. We know, man. <laughs> at all. And and it, and it was just like, you know, like I was just like, yeah, I just want to talk about anything else. And then, you know, after after that show kind of ended in a in a mess and a disaster, um, we, it, you know, it was, I was, I was kind of left projectless and, and, and limit break radio can it came back up because 2.0 was launching and suddenly, you know, like I was interested and I, you know, I was putting out feelers for other people that were interested and suddenly Kahlo and Juxta kind of came up as, as being interested in the game. And, and as soon as we started talking, like, like as soon as I got Kahlo and Juxta, as soon as I got Juxta on board, really. I was like, okay, I can make this happen. And, and then I, and then I got a Scalia and then, and then Kahlo came along later and then we brought Nika on. Um, but you know, one of the, it, we had, we had adjusted a lot in the transition between the 11 show and the 14 show, just in the way that we approach doing the show, programming the show um, that, that shifted between the two. And so, yeah, like I know I, you know, yeah, we never really ever, resolved the 11 show but you know uh, um but you came back like a year later how long was that how was how long was the time in between I, the two it was probably a year and a half it was, it, it was probably a year and a half Do yeah you? i had to i had to end that relationship to be able to um to be able to to st- that was that was kind of the other thing about that relationship is that uh, she resented Limit Break Radio because of how much time it took up in my life, and she also liked to claim. She also liked to claim credit for things for Limit Break. She was like, "I came up with the, the idea for Limit Break Radio." I was like, "No, the fuck you didn't! <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about, you dumb bitch? No, you fucking didn't!" Like that was I. I hated that shit. Then I and I always thought that was so stupid of her. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, like she, she would resent it and she would get like, it would be a fight every time I would do the show, even going back to like when we were at college, but it was just like, like it was, it was sort of like, you know how, like sometimes there are people and, and this is kind of, this is kind of sad, but you know, there are people who will go to the bar to get a, get a, get away from their shrew of a wife. That's sort of what <laughs> limit break radio was for me for a while. It was like three hours where I could turn off my phone and I knew I wasn't going to be you know, I wasn't going to be assaulted by this woman that I lived with. You know what I mean? It was just like, God, I, I, I it was, it, it was, it was terrible. And honestly, yeah, that relationship had to end for me to, to come back to limit break radio because she had made it so toxic. Like I would get, I would get like, like acid reflux really bad when I would think about trying to schedule a limit break radio because of the fights that it would cause. And it was stupid. It was, and it was, yeah, I know it was ridiculous that, that a relationship that I could have would have that much of an impact on a project or like my, you know, like, like my, my enthusiasm for a project. Cause it did in a lot of ways, it just like, it like, it made it unfun for me. You know, there was a lot, there was actually a lot of things in, in the 11 days that made the project unfun for me, but so many people were, were into what we were doing that that's what kept me doing it. Um, but the forums were super unfun. The, you know, my, uh, my girlfriend at the time, that was super unfun. Um, you know, trying to manage people and schedule things that was super unfun, but I did all of that because the reward was the people 
and uh, and and the audience. And I and I loved that. And I craved that so much that I was just like, yeah, fine, whatever. I'll trudge through this bullshit in my personal life and get to the other side of it. And and I mean, you know, there are some shows that you that you hear it wearing on me. Like I just you could tell that I had just gotten in after this big blow up fight. And I was just like, fuck everything, you know, like that was probably the hardest thing about doing the 11, the 11 show was just like my incredibly dysfunctional personal life at the time. That'll kill it. Wow. Uh, that's I had no idea. Yeah, yeah no one does. You don't, no. you don't hear it on the episodes. I, I, I completely disagree. No one but. does. No one. No one. No one has ever asked about that. So it's like I've never never had the chance to like to like talk about it. We're but here like, for totally, it. Man. That's that's 100 percent of what was happening. Wow. We got yeah. our little pads and uh, pens out and <laughs> kicking back in our easy chairs. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it, it gets you. Know, you. It's, like, it's, I'm not, it, everyone goes through that shit. You know, like, it's just, it's just personal bullshit. It's just personal drama, like, whatever. But, you know, like, it did, it definitely did have a pretty big impact on, on the way that I could produce the show. And now that I don't have any of those pers- restrictions, like, I think, I think I'm, like, able to run a way better show now because of it because it's like i don't have somebody trying to micromanage my time and 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 i can devote as much or as little time to the project as as i as needed um so you know that's it, it, a lot of people don't think about that but like it that is a huge that has a huge 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 impact on on the way that a project plays out all right you ready to talk about uh, a radio returns yeah i'm ready yeah definitely we, can we just go straight into it um, actually, that break sounds pretty good. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I need to get something to drink here. Cause, get some uh, water. Let's, yeah, I'm start, uh, starting to get in, get that foam that, that forms at the corners of your mouth when you've been talking for way too long. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. You want to take a uh, five-minute break? Five minutes sounds good. Well, that was a nice first half. The yeah. break that we took was actually a whole week. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he <laughs> s- stayed on hold for us. Yeah. So next week you get to hear part two in which he talks about a radio reborn, which is uh, the new Limit Break Radio, the Limit Break Radio that's been around for a little over a year, and that's uh, gonna be it's gonna be good too, man. Oh yeah, it was. He a- got he got really personal at the end there, and I was not expecting that, but. Uh, I'm really glad he did because yeah. that was something I always wanted to know. I always wanted to know what happened to the original show. There was never any sign off. There was never any goodbye guys. It just yeah, it just dropped was off. not there for uh, over a year, and then it came back later as as a radio return. So yeah, awesomely clever name too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess. Well, let's answer at least one question before we get out of here. All right. All right. We'll take a look at him. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first question, and maybe only question, depending on what we decide to do. Yeah, let's answer two. All right, uh, this one is from Void uh, on the forums. He is an Ultima weapon, and he is also kind of doing the same thing we did. He's already done with it, though. Uh, he's got his own little blog. It's a uh, green mushroom, agreenmushroom.com, where you can see his review of the Final Fantasy series. Except he skipped 11. He did, and his uh, order is corrupt, but whatever. Um <laughs> Well, yeah, so check that out. He does a lot of stuff with uh, more recent games, too. He'll do, like, little tidbits of news and how he feels about it. So I think we should do an episode with him. We probably should. Yeah. So uh, the question is titled, Best Final Fantasy for New Players. Hey, guys, after finishing up the main series, I came to the conclusion that FF10 is the Final Fantasy game that I will always recommend to newbies in the series. 
Uh, he thinks it's very approachable, yeah, kind of, and has the easiest gameplay mechanics to understand. It seems to be the most forgiving <laughs> game in terms of gameplay, and it has a story that isn't overly convoluted. Now that you're almost done with the mainline games, I will put the question to you. What mainline Final Fantasy game would you recommend for players that have never before played a Final Fantasy? Well, I think I have actually said this. I feel like we may have before. mentioned it. Yeah. Um, probably not to a question, but um, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Oh man, it's I'm beautiful. gonna. I don't know, man. I'm gonna agree with him. I think ten is probably the best one for a new. I completely agree, also. But I think it does depend on the gamer that you're talking to and kind of what games that they have played. If they've never played a turn-based game. I think that would be... I think you might want to go with 12. Really? Frankly, yeah. Wow. I don't think that's a bad place to sp- uh, to start. For someone who maybe really likes Western RPGs, but is, never, is not used to a turn-based kind of atmosphere, I think 12 is... I think it, it'll ease them more into it. Yeah. I mean, it is super complex. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. If they've ever played an MMO, I think 12 would definitely be the one. Yeah. Uh, six was probably my second choice, though. Six is a second choice if you know someone who, like, respects older games. Like yeah. Super NES games and stuff like that. Yeah, if they're not, like, super weird about old stuff, like how some people don't watch black and white movies or yeah, whatever. Yeah, fuck those people, by the way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say six also. Seven's not a bad place to start either. No, think. if you can get over the block. Really, six, seven, and ten. The best games in the series, uh, they're... They're also the easiest to get into. I don't. They're the simplest, I think. Yeah, to play. They're not. Uh, they're not super hard. So yeah. So I don't see why. I don't see why not those two, or those three. One of those three. I think ten is is the best one though. Get the uh, PS4, or PS3 version of ten. Yeah, go for it. Now that the PS4 version is uh, a little <laughs> bit repaired, it's yeah, it's good. Yeah, I I totally agree with Void on that. Yeah, that's surprising. We uh, we agree with them this time. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's do another one here. This one's from Schnitzel Time from the forums. He's a uh, Ultima weapon as well. Wow. All these ranks are going to go away. Yep. Have fun while you can. Uh, <laughs> it's titled Worst Way You've Died slash Got Game Over in a Video Game. Let's make it specifically RPGs, not necessarily FF. I'd like to stick to RPGs, but if you have a really good one, something... Uh, a good Halo one or something that's cool too. I think in the past I've mistakenly believed I had reflect on my character when I planned to reflect a spell off him, only to find out that reflect wore off and killed my caster, Vivi. Not a very specific example, but I feel like there's so many buried in my experiences, I just start to forget how embarrassing some of them are. There's also all the times in FF8 he's been killed accidentally in what otherwise would be an easy battle because he took his time drawing magic. Then in 7, when he tried to get the Shadow Flare enemy skill off Ultima Weapon, only to die and lose when he casted it. You guys got any good ones? Wow. I don't know, do you, Joe? <laughs> I've died so many times, it's hard to think of Yeah, one. especially recently with 13. It's like, oh, random enemy? Yeah, guess what? It's better than you. <laughs> good night. <laughs> It's sick. If you don't do it that's right. That's pretty accurate. Oh, oh, I remember one just right now. Um, I was in the orphan uh, place, and there's kind of like that last enemy you got to fight before you can go into another hallway. Real big guy. He's, <laughs> he's rough, okay? Especially if you're not well leveled up. And um, before I decided to go back to Pulse and level up some more, I barely made it past that guy. Yeah. And then I couldn't make it past the next place. And so with no, with one save point in between, which I had saved on, I was stuck in between two guys, one of which I had killed once. The other one I've killed no times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw Joe die to this guy <laughs> like at least six times. He was I don't know rocking. how many times I, I went back. I was like, I have to get to Pulse. I have to go back the other hallway. But it won't let you. And I could <laughs> not kill him for the longest time. So that was a dumb, that was not necessarily a dumb death. That was a dumb save. Yeah. One of those game changing. It was uh, a dumb save, save which ensured that I would die 99% of the time. Well, and the crappy thing about that particular spot, too, is there wasn't anyone else to level up on. It was the guy that you can barely kill and the guy that you don't 
think you can kill it all because you haven't yet. So you're just screwed <laughs> unless you get out of there, which you did, thankfully. Kind of. I mean, I would have thoroughly enjoyed you just oh, restarting. So and bad, dude. <laughs> doing a speed run oh, last week. But all right. That's uh that's a good example. Um I've had cases in nine where the same same thing would happen with VV. Uh <laughs> reflect would wear off. I'd hit him with a uh, huge spell and just insta insta kill the guy. And that's always annoying. Uh, oh, I have accidentally targeted my own guys. That's happened more than once. When you have it on series. memory, especially. And yeah, if you have it on memory and you've like yep. clicked, and for some odd reason you had to hit yourself and then you just kill yourself. Oh, two in two, it happened a lot. Yeah, there was a. I remember you like, you know, because we figured out the attack spamming thing. We're like, oh, yeah, this is wonderful. I'm doing sick amounts of damage. And then. Yeah, just press X back, yeah. X back, X back, yeah, X, X back. X three times, and then do on the it, last do guy. Do it 100 back up. times, and then you'll level up your stat. Once. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, well, we can do the same thing with health. And then Joe goes in, he hits himself, and kills himself. Yeah. Goes in, hits himself, kills himself. He's like, well, I got to restart the game now because uh, I'm doing too much damage to myself <laughs> and I can't actually level up to the point where I can play the game without the HP increases. So that's that's a whole other can of worms that I, <laughs> I don't ever want to experience again. <laughs> Thank God they uh, they fixed that with more westernized models of the use it and get better system. Yeah. Um, let's see. Worst death. I know in Halo, oh. Halo One. You you brought up Halo, Halo One. Um, in the snow level, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's <laughs> there's a ton of flood and shit. And me and Timo on the Xbox, we decided that uh, we were gonna play through the first Halo on Legendary. All right. And so we got to that level, and everything was going fine you know it's it's a rough game on legendary that first halo um and then we got to like this big open area with like a ton of little offshoot rooms and stuff like that and we found out that if you kind of stay to the side of the of one of the teleport things you you got one character that goes forward and then in halo if they go forward far enough into a room there's like a little there's an event that happens that makes you transport to them right you teleport yeah Okay, we figured out how to walk past that teleport thing. We like, you got to hug the wall to the side. And if you do that, there the event that triggers the enemies in the next room to start moving doesn't go off. Oh, wow. And so you keep one guy on the other side of that teleport thing, and then one guy walks around it and into the next room, and then all the guys are frozen there. And you nice. just And then you shoot them all like crazy. And then you have the other guy go back, and then you have the other guy trigger the event, and then they all just die. Nice. Which is awesome. But we ran out of ammo, and all the enemies ran out of ammo. Ammo. There were no an enemies <laughs> left, and uh, all there were were wraiths with no ammo. So they were just running around. They had the light beam go off, and nothing would happen. And you couldn't get out of the area for some reason. Like we had glitched the game. Oh, so wow, I had to kill sucks. myself. So when I think of weird deaths, I like, I, there was nothing I could do. We glitched the game like crazy. And then the game, you know, got its revenge. It got its <laughs> revenge by not letting any bullet fly. All right. I've got, I've weird, got one actually. Weird glitch. Uh, Final Fantasy 12. I was doing the death scythe hunt. Kind of. I went into the area. I thought I had accepted the hunt, but sometimes I get, you know, a little overzealous, and I'm like, yeah, let's go kill this guy. So I run into the area. I spend about an hour in there trying to get this guy to appear, and I'm like, Jesus, why won't he show up? You know, I'm leveling up. I've gained like three, four levels, and that's a lot for 12, especially when you're around level 50s or so. And uh, I'm like, God, guys, I don't know what's going on. I'm streaming the game, and the, one of the guys is like, oh, I mean, did you accept it? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I mean... You know, it's, I don't know why I wouldn't. And then I look at it. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I totally forgot. Because what I did was I went to the area to accept it, but then I bought an item and sold a few other things. And then I forgot to accept the mission. And I was like, all right, well, Jesus, I'm just going to get out of here then. And instead of uh, level grinding my way out, I just ran. And I ran over this... Uh, <laughs> this trap i started getting killed off you know because i'm running away and they're doing hefty amounts of damage when you're not curing yourself it starts to get brutal and 
So they wipe out a couple party members. I swap a few more in, and one of the party members that comes in doesn't have float on, and they step on one of those traps in the Necrohull, and it just fucking destroys everybody. Everybody's dead, and I'm like, oh my god. I pull out, there's one person left. It's Balthier. And I pull Balthier out, and like the second I get out of the menu, somebody just tags me, and I it's just game <laughs> over. Like an hour and a half of level grinding, oh. just gone. And I was like, oh my god, no. <laughs> that happened to me a couple times in that game, but that one was the worst, because I knew I could kill everything in the area, but I was like, I don't want to do this again, I just want to go accept the hunt and beat it. And then I died. Like I got destroyed too. I wasn't even like halfway out. That, that was that, that was sounds rough. horrible. I was mad, dude. I think <laughs> I remember that Yizamat the fight. I, I went out like three times or something like that. And one of those times it was like there was a trap right at the end. Yeah. I think I think I only had like one guy left. And it was like <laughs> a miracle that I had one guy left. Nice, yeah. And, uh I had died on a trap, though, before. I think I died in a trap in, in one of the big dungeons. Yeah, and the traps was, are that rough That was infuriating. In the traps are rough at the beginning of the game. They aren't rough really later on. Well, there are some. It depends on what spot. I mean, there's a couple, yeah, that are bad. That'll like, kill you, but, but, you know, you know where they are normally after you hit them one time. <laughs> it's the worst when an NPC hits them, too. Like, some one of your asshole secondary party members are just, like, trotting along. <laughs> You know, they step on a fucking landmine, blow their legs off, kill everybody else. That's wow. it's it's crazy. So yeah, that's got to be the the worst death. I mean, the final hunt in thirteen has been rocking me, and you can see my rage filled uh, Twitch experience, which many people have seen now. Apparently, Twitch there's experience. like there's like uh, ten or twelve views on it, which is kind of a lot for a non review, non episode on Twitch. So. uh that's infuriating too, but that's a little different. That's not just a complete screw of everything I've ever had in a game like the twelve one was. So yeah, we save that for Saturday great, uh, nights. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good question. Um, I think we're gonna skip our other little things. You know, if you want to leave us an iTunes review, we will read them as soon as we have an episode that's not two hours long. Yeah. Um, and of course, our questions from us to you, which I forgot to post on the forum, which I will. Take I noticed. This week. Thank you. Um, but we will definitely get to that. Um, please stay tuned next week. We're going to talk to Nero some more and he's awesome. It's so. true. He's, he's a really good interviewer. Yes. Interviewee. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's, uh, that's it for this time. As always guys, enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show is produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.